Hello and welcome back to Ghosties. I'm Macy. And I'm Natalie. We're coming at you today with another listener story. Episode full of your stories. And we have kind of a short one today. Actually, I, I put a bunch of little short ones together. Cute. I'm excited. Before we get started too, we have a few announcements, but if you have a story of your own, please send it to us. Uh, we love these. These are our favorites. We say this like every single episode at this point. But you can go ahead and send us your stories at ghosties po- to our email at ghostiespod at gmail.com. That's G-H-O-S-T-E-A-S-P-O-D at gmail.com. Literally anything. Literally. Ghost, alien, Bigfoot. I want to know everything. Any theories you have about the pyramids? Ooh, yeah. Theories. <laughs> We're, we'll take theories, too. I anything. love to read a good theory. I do, too. We also have another exciting announcement. We have hit a thousand subscribers on YouTube. Ah, it feels <laughs> fake. Like that's so unreal. Yeah, surreal, dude. I've said it before. Like when we started even talking about this, I was like, oh, it'll be a fun little thing for us to get together and do. Maybe like 100 people will listen max. Mostly like, people we know. Yeah, it'd be yeah. like 75 people that we know or have known in the past that come across us on social media and then like maybe a couple random stragglers on the internet. But a thousand subscribers i know we're so thankful for all of you who take the time out of your day to listen it just means the world to us it's so weird like i don't know like you like us you really like us like (laughs) unless you're hate subscribing that's okay too. that's fine too (laughs) but we're having a lot of fun and it feels like y'all are too so we're really thankful for y'all being here with us continue to share this podcast wherever you listen with everyone you know and uh rate review like subscribe do all the things but yeah thank you so much and thank to you. anyone subscribing and commenting we see all of your comments and we send them back and forth um through text because i try not to read like if there's long ones i try not to read them in case they're stories because some people comment their stories and um i like to be surprised but like any like we're talking about comments all day so we see yes. them all that's my favorite really thing do. i think me too throughout the day i constantly am checking to see if i do too someone else commented yeah i read the small ones but as soon as i see like when i was read I'm more like, yeah no, i can't read it also to go along with that we mentioned before that once we hit a thousand we were gonna have a little surprise of sorts for you and we've made it so Woo! we've planned to do a little giveaway we're gonna have um kind of like a special merch like we're ordering ourselves a little something mm-hmm. so we thought maybe we would give one of you something as well we're gonna have a i believe it's a mug and Mm -hmm. a sticker we're working on it still we originally had a plan that's why this is coming kind of like a little bit after a thousand because we originally had like a plan of doing more merch and stuff but things didn't pan out just a little unrealistic right now for where we're at yes eventually we will so share the video and get us more subscribers yeah but eventually we're gonna do more but we still want to do a giveaway because it's like we we said we were gonna do something special so yes so we'll have a little more details maybe in the next video once we've have everything kind of hammered out but it's probably going to be on instagram so if you haven't already follow and subscribe here and then (laughs) go over to our instagram at ghosties pod and follow us over there and be on the lookout we'll announce it in a video too but you'll have to like comment on our post or whatever and our final update before we get started because i'm really ready to get these stories going is we mentioned before that we were going to kind of post our warm-ups as a little side quest maybe a second little channel and we are in the process of doing that if you care at all you don't have to but (laughs) that's fine it's fun for us so we have some options if y'all for names because what we do so she comes over and we do this but like we always end up before we start recording talking and just talking forever we have like random stuff it'll be like a 45 minute video the video is like two plus hours long and so it's like man we have so much extra stuff that we talk about and it has nothing to do with the pod it's random stuff that we talk about like actors and movies and snacks and people and just everything work yeah everything (laughs) we talk about everything and so like it's just kind of fun we have it so her husband suggested like, oh, why don't y'all just like use that footage that you have? So if you want to hear us talk about nonsense, here we go. But we wanted to hear your opinions as well. So we have a few options that are kind of funny for the name of our warm up podcast slash video slash whatever it turns whatever. out to be. It's just going to be fun. So go ahead and leave a comment down below if you're on YouTube and you can leave a little comment if you're on Spotify as well. Yes. And let us know what your favorite is out of these names or if you have a better name. Oh, yeah. We love to hear extras. We want to do it like tea themed still, but not it's not paranormal. So yeah. sometimes it might be if we have an extra little story. But Maybe. anyway, we have one 
the loose leaves. <laughs> now you're saying it. I'm embarrassed. <laughs> Two, Natalie's favorite, bitter and withering. That's my favorite. But now when we say it out loud, I feel like it sucks. But bitter and withering, I think is hilarious. Three, teed talk, like TED talk, but T apostrophe D. Uh, <laughs> and then brouhaha, which <laughs> might be my favorite. It's spelled like brew, like B-R-E-W, haha. And like the word brouhaha, I had to look it up because I knew what the word meant. Same. But I'm just not really able to convey it. It means a noisy and overexcited reaction or response to something. And I thought that was just funny. It's accurate. But I think it's funny. But the fact that we had to double check on the uh, definition, I'm like, mm. yeah. but yeah, if y'all automatically got it, let us know. So out of the four, let me know your favorite. Um, or if you have a, a better option for us, let us know. And if you care. Let and if you know. care <laughs> if you would watch let us know but if you wouldn't also let us know nicely be like you know <laughs> I we're don't good care we don't need more <laughs> that it's, that's fine to know too but be nice please um but okay without further ado our tea today is another big low tea it's french vanilla so Woo, i'm excited about this one and in my cute little baymax s'mores mug perfect for our little campfire here it's the cutest mug i've ever seen all right let's go I love excellent. I love vanilla and I love chai. It's very. Those are your top twos? I think so. I like that's like the the essence of the teas that I like. We've but tried a few and they never fail. Yeah. So our first story comes from Jason. He says, hi. So here's my terrifying story. I saw the hat man about 14 <gasps> years ago and I will never forget. Oh, no. Yes. The dreaded hat man. The hat man. I was staying. <laughs> Why did I say that? I don't know. <laughs> Like we were just talking about social interactions. <laughs> I know. I have to reel myself in here. I was staying over at my big cousin's. His daughter was at her mom's. So he said I could sleep in her room for the night. So I head up to my bed. I had literally just laid down and was thinking about the football results, etc. Typical guy. I had definitely not drifted off to sleep, so I didn't feel tired yet. Anyway, I thought I could kind of hear breathing while I was breathing. So I momentarily stopped and was sure I could hear the breathing still. <gasps> But thought I was, I must be tripping. I hate that. I'm okay. sorry. Keep going. <laughs> I thought you were going to say something. No, no, no. Keep going. I'm, I'm in processing. Continuing to think about football, etc. I'm laying on my back and I feel a soft tap on the back of my head. Then a second. I instantly got goosebumps, realization, and then a third tap on the back of my head. One, two, three. I sat up in the bed as quick as I could and then automatically looked over to the right as the bedroom door is in that direction at the top of the room, across from the head of the bed. There was light shining in the room from the street lamps from a window at the bottom of the room. So when I sat up, my eyes instantly locked on to a very clear shadow just left of the door on the wall, about seven feet tall and facing me, very menacing and imposing. It had what appeared to be a long coat with long arms at its side, and it had a hat on like a cowboy hat or, or to that style. It was a shadow, no face or eyes, no features just a plain black shadow and it stood perfectly still and floated along the wall slowly from right to the left of the room i just got chills i have never felt fear like that in my life still to this day as soon as it got to the end of the room i ran and i mean ran to the door i went straight to my cousin's room woke him up and told him he was disinterested as he was still half asleep he told me to take his dog and go back to bed his female golden retriever who would lick someone to death i did though but went downstairs and slept with the dog on the sofa with the <laughs> living room light on. Only after did I find out what the hat man was through looking up what I had encountered with, uh, what I had an encounter with on Google and found forums on something called hat man and shadow people. I'm not crazy. I don't see ghosts all the time. Wasn't drinking or on drugs, but that night I know what I saw and it was like it was messing with me. It has made me believe that there are definitely things around us we just can't explain. Oh my God. First of all, I like the way that story was told. It was very... To the point. Yeah, I liked it. I Me liked the, how you wrote it. The fact that you weren't like... this, like There wasn't like a for, like an episode of like sleep paralysis. And why did it tap on the back of the head? Yeah. I hate that. The touching. I know. I, I could think feel that... it on the back of my head too. Just like tap, tap, tap. Oh my God. Yeah, that one really freaked me out. Gave me the chills. Me too. I feel like the last episode we did wasn't like scary. So I'm like not in like a scared mood. 
that got me back into it. Yeah. I told you we would switch it up. But yeah, m most of the stories y'all tell us are so scary. I know. What the heck? Let's talk a little bit more about the hat man because he said that he wasn't asleep. I, that's so what I was going to say too. Did he drift off unknowingly? Just kind yeah. of like, you know, like when, when you kind of drift into almost like daydream almost. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Did he kind of start drifting off and that's when he saw him? I don't know. I don't know what the, like the full lore of the hat man is like is it always in sleep or is it i don't know i don't know and honestly i don't want to <laughs> that's really scary we've said this before but something about a, a shadow person in a hat too just yes. is the hat takes it to the next level yes. for some reason it seems more official it's not just like a random ghost with like a normal like outfit on a shirt and jeans it's like you're like something darker like Means why business. are you dressed that? yeah yeah i'm scared I honestly am too. I'm sorry that you experienced that. And I hate that we keep freaking talking about things around sleep and in bed because that is my that's I'm my so one sorry. thing in this life. That's my one thing. I wake up excited to go back to bed. Mm -hmm. And I'll just keep saying, oh yeah, I saw this in my sleep. I've started to have some scary dreams after things we've really? talked about. Yes. We need to start um, protecting ourselves a little more, I think. Not we need like to start saying like, like more prayers and stuff and, and doing what you got to do before and after. I don't wake up feeling scared, but like I'll have some dream like after what one, which one was it that I texted you that I had a scary dream a sleep paralysis one. I think it was because I had a nightmare that night. I didn't have sleep paralysis because I would like refuse to sleep on my back now because mm -hmm. I get really nervous. But I think it was that one. I had a bad dream that night and I was like, I knew it. Yeah. Like Jason said at the, at the end that there are things around us that we just can't explain. And I truly think that there's a connection. We said this in our dreams episode too, mm -hmm. between dreams and the spirit realm. Yes. Yeah. And hundred percent. Yeah. We need to, we need to work on our protection a little more, I think. So right now we're doing like bare minimum. Here's our next one. It's from Sophia. They say, Hey, my name is Sophia and I love watching y'all's videos, especially in school. So it feels like time flies. Thank nice. you, Sophia. I also watched videos in school. <laughs> Me too. I don't have much to my story compared to the others, but I wanted to share it. So hopefully y'all can use it in the future. Um, subscribe your story. Here you are. Thank you. My family, aunt, mom, brother, cousin, and I went to... What? It's Spanish. Oh, <laughs> I was like, what? Where? Went to Piedras Negras, Mexico. I think I did okay. Sure. And stayed at my old grandma's house that she used to live before she went to the U.S., which is also my mom's childhood home. It's also located next to my other aunt's house, literally next to hers. That's just background information. And disclaimer, there are names. I'm not good with pronunciation, so I apologize ahead of time if I do not pronounce these correctly. She says, my mom, Marlene, and Aunt Laura went, off, uh, went out to get some stuff for later, and my brother, Rom, and my cousin, Rose, were upstairs. I was downstairs playing my trumpet, so I wouldn't fall behind in band. Nice. Trumpet's a cool instrument. Yeah. I was facing the front door, and the staircase was to my left. I was turning to my left, and for a second, I saw a skinny woman, black silhouette, or shadow on the staircase midway. Even though I saw it for a second, in that time, the woman was very clear and recognizable that it was a woman, and also she was positioned as if she was looking right at me, in my eyes, her hands placed on the rail. Her front was facing me, and it felt like her hair was mid-length and slightly medium dark hair. I didn't feel scared, which was very surprising, because I always thought if I ever saw a spirit, I would freak out, but no, and kept playing. After like five to 10 minutes, um, I went upstairs to use the restroom and midway on the staircase where the woman was, I heard my name being called by my brother's voice. It was from where he was, um, where he was at upstairs. I didn't think anything about it until later that night. That night when everyone was just talking about our day together, I mentioned what I saw and how she looked. And my aunt Laura said that I described my dead aunt Lily, who was also the mother of my cousin Rose. I also mentioned my name being called and again asked if they really called me and once again they said no. My Aunt Lily was apparently involved in the cartel's drug, tra drug trafficking and went missing for about two days and was found by the train tracks uh, with another girl dead. Oh my god. I don't know what to think of this and it has been a little over two years since that happened and, never, and I've never experienced anything like that since. Thank you for reading. First of all, I'm very sorry about your aunt. That's very sad and That's tragic. That's tragic. But the fact that when you saw it, you weren't scared. I was thinking like, oh, was there a family member? So like, that's really, that's comfort. I think that's comforting. Yeah, a little bit. Because if something horrible happened, like, I don't know, like. 
people can just feel it when it's a more negative spirit. Yeah. Like you can just sense that mm-hmm. that kind of stuff, the fear and stuff welling up inside of you. Yeah. So the fact that you weren't scared is, yeah, like I you said, it's comforting. Yeah. I think it's a good sign. Also, it's like kind of beautiful in a way. I don't know. But that's crazy that you didn't even really know her and you saw her and. Oh, I would have lost like, that's, it. Like that's. Yeah. That's proof to me. Yeah. I mean, it's good. It's good, good proof enough for as me. I think. Yeah. That's all I need. Thank you so much, Sophia. On to the next. Hi, I've seen multiple of your videos and decided to share my experience with the paranormal. For background, when my family moved into my childhood home, I was three years old, female, and the youngest of five. Thanks for watching our videos. (laughs) We had one specific ghost in this house who loved to make appearances. We always called him the little boy ghost, and everyone in my family claims as a child he and I would play together often. My mom and dad assumed I made him up, until one day my mom wakes up to knocking on her bedroom door. It's pitch black in the room and the hallway light is on. She says, come in, and she vividly remembers a little boy in the doorway. She couldn't see his face, but assumed it was my brother. He walked into her room saying he was scared. She says, shut the door and climb in between your dad and I. She feels the bed dip between them and the covers lift. She felt him beside her. She turns to her nightstand, looks at the time. It was 2 a.m. She said she turned back to hug my brother and no one was there. (gasps) Another instance that happened was when my mom and dad both woke up to loud banging around the house. Now remember, she had five kids, all ages ranging between five and 14. That's a lot of people. (laughs) She heard doors slamming shut, TVs on full blast, screaming, laughing, and running. Immediately irritated, she gets up and goes into one of our rooms. She sees all of us sleeping on the bed, besides my older sister who was awake. We'd sleep together because we were scared to sleep in our separate rooms. Us. We did too. (laughs) She asks my sister, why were you all just banging on the doors and walls? My sister replies, we weren't. Everyone is asleep. At the obvious sign we were all indeed asleep, my mom tells my sister goodnight and walks back into her room. She tells my dad my sister was the only one awake and they both agree they probably misheard it all. Ever since these encounters happen, we've had many more creepy things happen from banging pots and pans and handymen coming to fix an electrical issue and refuse to come back to the house. We've since moved out. They say I have a lot more stories and would love to share please please do because what that's wild okay oh the calling in bed the little ghost boy hate it hate it oh my god i mean he's the fact that he's like i'm scared and and wanted (gasps) comfort though i know we said kids and ghosts is is extra creepy but that made me a little sad it made me sad but also like what if he was just a demon like disguising himself i know that's what's scary about them i think is you never know if it's a a demon or something really dark trying to trick you yes but it crawling into the bed and feeling it is and like she said come in like she let it in oh black eyed children (gasps) i didn't think about that that just gave me chills i know as soon as you were like she said like come in Mm -hmm. oh i don't like that Mm -hmm. the okay and then the banging on the whole house they were just like we must have made that up in our minds let's go back to bed hotel we're leaving i wonder if her sister was awake and heard all of it too but she if she did she probably would have like went to them or like been like oh my god no i heard it too maybe for her to be like no we're no, all sleeping they're sleeping yeah so that's a good please send us the rest of any encounters in that house specifically because what yeah i would like to know that's crazy and i wonder if there was any anything history. that happened yeah any history to the home or the land mm-hmm. i always want to know the history behind things like too. if there's if there's a reason for yes that kind of activity to occur me too that's also like i eventually in this economy would like to buy a house Mm -hmm. i feel like i'd have to have a brand new house because i just first of all like people's energy being in the house or like what if what if someone what if something tragic happened and like they just don't tell me well what about the land i know oh i know you can't escape i know but yeah or the people building your house bringing in kind of negative energy too yeah i feel like i would like be there like you know some people like write like bible verses on like the like the, the stuff in stuff? their house yeah i would do something something you just like pull like up that. a lawn chair and sit in the middle and watch I, them I'd do watch their work them. yeah also if they like poured concrete i would let my dogs like put their paws on it i love when people do that i think that's so cute it is cute anyways sorry <laughs> that got off track that's fast. okay this one came from a comment on um one of our shorts mm-hmm. it was about the from the paranormal games episode oh, okay it was about the one man hide and seek i believe oh I think I saw the beginning of this comment and I didn't read it. Yeah. Okay. Back in high school, a friend of mine played something similar, but it was with a cloth doll filled with dry rice. 
Almost all of the steps are the exact same except for the doll, which you soak it in water to give it some heft, then invite a spirit to inhabit the doll to play. If you don't get caught by the doll, you win. But to end the game, you have to find the doll at 3 a.m. Then you shut the bathroom door, hide till 3 a.m., etc. So very similar to what we were mm-hmm. saying. My friend and his mom played it, and they hid together in the living room. The, the doll they made was about as long as your forearm, made up of burlap, and had no details. They left it sitting on the bathroom sink after soaking it in water, shut the bathroom door, and hid. 3 a.m. rolls around, and nothing happened, so they go to finish off the ritual. His mom opened the bathroom door, and the stupid doll was pressed against it. There was a water trail from the bathroom sink across the counter to the closed toilet lid, edge of the bathtub, and across the floor to the door, where it sat slumped against it. Even the bath mat was drenched. Still makes me shudder 12 years later. He <laughs> even remembers it in vivid detail. Oh my god, I'm... T- okay, for my own sanity, the mom was playing a prank. I have to believe. I, hope I so. have to believe that she no, was No, but she kidding. says they shut the door and they went and hid together in the living room till 3 a.m. And then she said, Oh, I need to go to the restroom. Hee hee hee. Because if not, I I can't. That's terrifying. Absolutely <laughs> terrifying. Horrifying. I hate that a lot. The Paranormal Games one really kind of got to me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was unexpected. Mm-mm. Like, I was like, oh, well, look at these. I mean, I knew they were creepy, but once and I got down one, into yeah. them. But the way the, like, the water was just all over the bathroom, too. I know. What was it doing in there? I'm scared. Pacing. It was pacing. Oh, shut mad up. trying to get out. You didn't have to say that. I'm sorry. You I didn't had have to, to, actually. I was imagining more of a Sour Patch Kid esque oh. movement where it was just kind of like oh i need to hop off the counter oh i'm on the toilet oh i'm on the bath and then oh now i'm on the door oh man i wasted all my energy that <laughs> is not what that was what i was picturing <sighs> it's what i have to believe i'm sorry i'm scared <laughs> like i'm scared <laughs> of a stupid oh a doll i'm honestly scared too because they invite something into it oh. that's what's scary about it don't play those games on to the next story this came from our email they say This story happened a couple months ago in November. So my school went on a camp, and on the second or third night, I was lying in the bed, just thinking, when a little girl with a red school dress on walked up to me. She had a long bob cut down to about her shoulders, and she said in a raspy, six-year-old voice, Wake up. I shouted, No, and I swiped at her. I told my friend Joel what happened, and he was creeped out. Just the month before, I had a dream I was standing in an old abandoned school. The painted murals were chipped and withering away. I saw at the end of the hall stood a little girl, the same little girl. I tried to talk to her, and about three seconds later, I felt my shoulders just barely shaking. I heard in my ear in the same whispering six-year-old voice, wake up. I woke up sweating, and I calmed myself down eventually. I told my teacher the next day what happened, and she said, if you have a dream with her, ask her what her name is, so I'll keep y'all updated. Thanks, and keep up the good work. What? Dude. (laughs) I'm s- horrified. I'm frightened. I feel... What if you ask her her name and she's like... Oh, yeah. Like we talked about uh-huh, like sometimes in like dreams. Like in dreams. I don't like that. I mean, I kind of want you to do it, but I'm scared. No, I think it'd be fine. You think so? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe she needs help. What are you... What, is, what can we do? Like... I don't know. You can help a spirit get out of purgatory. Okay. Jennifer Love Hewitt. I mean... <laughs> the ghost whisperer. <laughs> whisper but that's creepy regardless that's really horrifying the fact that they dreamed it a month before and then while out first of all you're out like camping and far away from home and On already trip, kind yeah. of a little nervous no and then you see her walk up to you oh uh, no whispering the same words why wake up? i don't I'm, know I'm wake scared. up i'm spooked yeah thank you so much for sending that in that is horrifying <laughs> this one came from a comment actually Uh, Another comment. It was just so good. I had to put it in here. It's from Angelica. Oh, I love that name. Me too. They said, I work at a mortuary slash cemetery, and there are so many creepy stories. But the one that got me was a security guard that I work with. He told me he was doing his night rounds in the cemetery, and he went to make sure the mausoleum was locked and the cemetery was empty. A lot of people like to practice witchcraft, like do rituals. That makes sense. He noticed the mausoleum light was on, and he went to go ensure it was empty, But then he heard a woman humming and followed it, and it led to a crypt. He kindly told the voice to rest, and it stopped. A lot of full-body apparitions, voices, things getting knocked over, and employees being touched have been reported too. I personally have not had an experience, but most people that are here in the evenings and early mornings do. 
I've gotten chills like eight times this episode. These are all really creepy. Yeah. I'm Because I just have such a like, but, I always try to paint the picture in my head and I, I can know. see it. The ghostly humming. Why would you follow it leading first you? of all? Well, because he's a security guard. He's like, God has to make sure that nobody's there. I guess you signed up for the job. Yeah, I guess so. But leading you to a crypt. And he's just like, hey, rest now. What is a crypt? Like in the mausoleum, like where they put the body in. I was envisioning like he saw like a silhouette of a per- No. Oh, I'm sick. Coming from within. And that's all we have for you guys today. Thank you so much. <laughs> My stomach just turned. Uh, yeah, I was disturbed the first time I, I heard that or, or read it. Literally the first time I read it, I had to like look over my shoulder because I got freaked out. I'm shaken. That's, shooketh. That's the one. My stomach genuinely like, I feel a pain in my stomach. That just made me so sick so fast. Yeah, that one really, I, I thought you were going to be a little more spooked at first. I didn't realize you didn't understand it. For some it. reason, like when you said crypt, I was thinking like when you said like cryptid before and told me what that meant. Like it just went over my head. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Are you sufficiently frightened? Horrified. Okay. Hated that. I mean, loved that. Thank you. Tell us all the rest of your stories, please. Any little small specific, but... That one... That's the that's one. That's probably one of the scariest stories I've Ever. heard since we started. Yeah. Oh, my God. Just the thought of a disembodied oh. voice coming from in... Yeah. We don't have to harp on it too much. Terrifying. Scary. There, there are not words. That's like straight from a scary movie. I don't even... I'm genuinely frightened. I'm really scared. Yeah, I'm probably going to be really scared going home I was tonight. I have fun driving home. Let's move on to the next one. Hi, ladies. First, I would like to say that I love your podcast. You guys keep me entertained and in a good mood at work. Thank you for the work you do. You guys are awesome. Keep up the good work. It is very much appreciated. Thank you. Cry. Thank you. Thank you so much. I don't know if you guys will be doing another subscriber story, but either way, I wanted to share some of mine with you. I have so many, but here are some of my personal stories with the paranormal. I have always seen things or apparitions as some might call them. One of the first memories I've had with spirits was when I was like three or four. I used to lie in bed at bedtime and I didn't have a TV in my room at the time. I have always been afraid of the dark, so my parents would put one of those cheap, small 99 cent store nightlights. Do you know which ones I'm talking about? Yes. Yes. We've also had those. As soon as the lights would come off, three floating heads would slowly appear floating right over my bed. There were I'm two- sorry. What? <laughs> I don't know. I'm scared. Continue. Uh, it's okay. It's giving haunted mansion. Uh, okay. There were two women and one man. They would only appear from their neck up. The male was bald and the women had hairdos from colonial times. You know, like those messy buns. Yes, that's a, that was exactly what I was picturing I was anyway. Too. I was too. I could also see like a pin in one of the women's collars. It was oval and it was blue and red and it had gold accents around it. I could see them as clear as day. They never said anything. They would slowly circle above me, silently expressionless. I just got full body chills. Sometimes I wondered if they wanted something. I wondered why they were there. I never found out. I never found out who they were either. I used to see them every night. I don't recall when I saw them first, but when they would, when, but when they would appear, they were so normal to me that I was never afraid. I would fall asleep while staring at them and them staring back at me. I remember thinking that it was common to see floating heads, <laughs> that I made a comment to some classmates one time and they looked at me like I was crazy yet didn't say anything. Oh my God. <laughs> I can't imagine. So, <laughs> I know. What were we talking about? Awkward situations? Yeah. That's hilarious. I have so many more that I will be sending to you, but I don't want to hog all your time. Once again, I appreciate it. Appreciate you guys. Keep up the amazing work. Please hog all of our time. Send this them is, all. This is what we want to do. Everybody's always like, I have more if you want them. We want them. <laughs> Us, okay. I will do a whole episode just on your stories. Yeah. Okay. A few things. The fact that you could see so many details and recall like the color of her pin and all these mm -hmm. things makes it so real. Why were they just heads? And what did they want? And just what? I don't know. Like... <laughs> Why were they just heads? I don't know. That spooks me. I kind of think like maybe they were, because um, you know, kids see like spirits and things. Maybe they were just like ancestors of this person and like 
watching over them while they sleep and like mm. they weren't supposed to be seen that's why they were mo- emotionless because they thought like oh we're, we're just watching that's an interesting take that i did not because have. they said they weren't scared they were just like oh you know the floating heads you'll see like yeah that's crazy that's so interesting mm-hmm. i don't know what to make of it i really don't no me neither i'm trying to rationalize and just try to come up with something but i've never heard that i wonder if they were like you said connected to her like the like ancestors or some some kind of guardian yeah or if they were connected to the land or the home that she was in well that one that's scary i'd rather be connected to her like as a family member but me too i like that much better it makes me feel a lot better if it's connected to the land they're like why are you sleeping in our bed like that's i like your take because i like ending on a like kind of semi-happy note yeah but that's very ominous That's if you're like spooky. an artist and you can draw draw us a picture of these people <laughs> and send it to us did she say to see when they stopped or did she see them forever i think she said she doesn't remember when she started seeing them but she saw them all the time when she was little okay i don't even know what to make of that it's definitely spooky but like i don't feel threatened i would feel like, threatened were they stationary just she said they were floating around like a like one of those baby things. Oh, like a mobile of yeah. <laughs> ghostly heads. <laughs> That's really scary. That's terrifying. I don't like that at all. <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> That's really scary. I don't know what's scarier, expressionless or if they were smiling. No, smiling would definitely I be scarier. Think smiling would be scarier. Okay. But you said you didn't feel threatened and you were just casually telling your friends, oh, you know. That the way if someone is came something up to that me would have said, me. I know of if someone would have said like Oh, you know, at night when you see those floating heads, I would have been like, mom, pick me up. Like, <laughs> ooh, yeah. Like, I don't have anything to say to that either because I'm scared. I, I d- genuinely like, I don't know if I feel scared. I think I'm just like shocked, shocked and just like, what does that mean? I do like your theory, though. I think that's what I would rationalize to myself. I'd be like a ghostly mobile of over me. guardian heads. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That could go on a shirt. <laughs> I knew you were about to freaking say that. I literally, as soon as I said the mobile thing, I was like, I shouldn't even say it. She's going to be like, we could put it on a shirt. I would wear I, that. I know you would. <laughs> Comment if you'd wear that too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up then. But we want to, once again, thank all of you so, so much for one, subscribing. A thousand subscribers is insane. And two, continuing to send us your stories because these are frightening in the best way possible yes frightening confusing fun i loved it this was i liked this episode it wasn't like super lengthy ones but like they were still like a quick little zinger that get your heart racing i'm still trying not to think about the yeah i don't ever want to think about it ever again for the rest of my life i'm gonna be thinking about it for the rest of my life what was the name of the person that said that angelica i believe angelica hmm shout out that's where we'll leave you today we appreciate you taking the time to listen and continue to listen and don't forget to share with everyone you know please (laughs) send us your stories at ghostiespod at gmail.com please whenever you get the chance and follow us on instagram at ghostiespod be on the lookout for our little giveaway it's coming soon probably next episode Mm -hmm. actually and the next episode is gonna be a scary one isn't it yeah the next I'm episode, I don't want to record at night. She literally asked me if we can record during the daytime because she's too scared to drive back home by myself. But now it's hyped up. So now I don't know. I'm scared. I'm scared. I think you might be scared. It's about skinwalkers. Spoiler. A lot of people have asked and that has been on our list the whole time. So be on the lookout for that. We're so excited to be going on this adventure with you guys and we will see you next Monday. Bye.